Thanks everybody for coming by today. My name is Ken Nelson and I'm from Panasonic. Um, today with me I have Sonny Perota who's from Panasonic Canada. Sonny's our HVAC specialist on the whole northeastern, uh, for me, he's of the whole world, but uh, northeastern specialist. And then of course we have our, our friend Mike Holmes from uh, Homes on Homes. And we appreciate your time today, Mike. Thanks for coming by. My absolute pleasure. I'm excited. I've already been walking around here, and that little toy right there has got me very impressed. That's our Whisper Comfort 60, right? It's our new ERV. It's a cassette mounted ERV, a uh, small footprint product, so it can go like under a thousand square feet. Uh, it's, it's been really exciting. So, for anyone that doesn't understand that, I, I put a Panasonic ERV in my home that is attached to the furnace which with the Swidget system, which is more science, it can test the air and turn on the ERV automatically on its own if the air, indoor air gets poor air quality. This little guy is, if you don't have a furnace, I just built, I'm building right now the uh, 750 square foot sunroom. I don't have a furnace in there. I have in-floor heating. This is the ticket item. This will go right in the ceiling rafters. And now I've got an ERV inside that room that I've got 100% airtight. This unit, we're going to have to install. You're going to like having that. That's, so when we talk about indoor air quality, one of the caveats about indoor air quality is it's for people, right? So we want to put ERVs, we want to put fresh air supplies where the people are going to congregate, right? And in your sunroom, for example, where you have a tight footprint and you have all tons of windows, people are going to go there. That's going to be your, your conversation pit, everything. You have to have fresh air. Otherwise, your conversation is going to be a nap time within you know a short time. So it's very cool. But this is all about indoor air quality. A lot of people don't pay attention to that. They're looking at the, what type of counters they should be buying, what type of flooring. I want your home to be so clean and air you put that guy in, you put in the Whisper Air Repair, and all of a sudden, you've got, a, you've got an ERV, then you've got the Whisper Air Repair. What's a Whisper Air Repair? Has everyone looked at it around the corner? Yeah. It will run at four watts continuous power, killing viruses, mold, and pulling the smells right off our clothes if we had a bad day, and the furniture. Now, that's cleaning. Like I didn't point at you. <laughs> <laughs> that's keeping the air clean. Now your lungs are clean. That's a, you don't want to clean the air in your home with your lungs. You want it clean for you. So, so the, Whis the Whisper Comfort 60 is one of our newest uh, products and it's very exciting. We've also added more to our ERV line altogether. I have traditional, I have corded, I have non-corded applications. I have, um, we now have uh, uh, the mirror images. So if you're doing a multifamily with a Siamese wall or shared services wall, right? I can put them side by side and I don't have to modify all of the ducting or the, the plumbing, if you will. Um, and literally, ERVs are, are so important right now because we're doing a better job building houses, right? Yes. We're making them airtight. So we need to have to bring in that fresh air and pull out the stale air. When we talk about houses, any house that goes below three air changes per hour, and if you're following Energy Star at all, Energy Star 3.1 is going to, or 3.2, excuse me, is driving you down to that three air changes or less, at that point, you need to have mechanical ventilation and the ERV provides that. It is what, what we call predictable and uneventful ventilation, right? I don't wanna wait for the wind to blow. I don't wanna wait for a window to get open. I want my ventilation to be predictable and, and at a value that's right. Talk about old homes. They breathe on their own. The windows leak, the walls leak, and a lot of stack effect for its from the attic space, pulling that air through up, it's called stack effect. That was automatically cleaning the air in your home and you didn't even know it. So what, what, what do we do? We bring in a contractor, someone like me, and they want to make the home environmentally friendly, friendly energy efficient. And I come in, I make it airtight, and all of a sudden, there's no fresh air. There's no air. And just like my sunroom, because I built it with uh, ICFs, then I'm adding two and a half inches of foam on the outside, giving a total of five inches of foam and then two pound spray foam and the whole, the, the whole cavity is insulated 100% floor, walls, ceiling, and that makes it 100% airtight. I have to have something like that. Or I gotta keep the windows open. Or you gotta keep the windows open, which is not recommended this time of year anywhere, yeah. yeah. And I, I would say, let's bring it back to the human side of things again. 
sure if it's working. Put it this way. I'm not sure. Like the human side of things, we talk about comfort, uh, and we talk about air exchanges, and we talk about the adverse effects of on health when you look at, you know, especially the humidity in the in the space. Um, an ERV will will be able to do that and do it well, and really give the the homeowner a peace of mind that they're in a safe, healthy space. I know we talk about code and we talk about billionaire type, but really it's about the humans living in that space and the indoor air quality. And that's what a, a, an ERV like the Whisper Comfort will do in a small, tight space. Has anyone noticed a rise in allergies and bronchitis and asthma? I have asthma. Anyone have asthma? Everyone, it doesn't matter, but even with just the allergies alone, the importance of cleaning the air inside the home is essential. But it's, again, something we don't think about. We don't understand the importance, because right now we can look in the air. What's in the air? Can anyone tell me? No, nothing. It's I can't see of, anything. But that's I right. Know. I know. can't see it, but it's full of crap. Yep. We breathe approximately 18,000 spore counts of mold in one cubic meter of airspace outside every day. It's when inside it starts to accumulate more spores of mold that it then affects you. Our bodies are used to that because we don't even realize we're breathing it in. Well, we talk about, when you talk about mold, right, that mold that's outside is also being affected by the sun's rays, UV, kills the mold. I mean, it's a continuous cycle of, of growth and death, right? Yes. When I bring it inside the house, all I'm really doing is adding 70 degrees with humidity. So if, if any of you, I always use the Chia Pet as my great example of how to grow things in a house, right? A Chia Pet is essentially mold growing on a, on a wet head of some sort, right? Yes. And that's what we run into when we have moisture loads that will have a phase change. We call it a phase change where it goes from vapor to a surface and solidifies or liquefies, I should say. And now you get the wetting and drying up there and water vapor carries particulates and they're active. And once that hits that wall and now I have a, a, a food growth for it, like sheetrock or, or wood, all of those things, that's where mold is gonna explode. And then we add cooking, right? Let's just fill the air with starch from our pastas. From VOCs. The VOCs, right. All that in there. It's just a, it's just a great I have a question for you, too. Let's see who can answer it. What gives off the most amount of moisture in your home? I know the answer. The human body. Your breath. Yeah. Very good. Yep, the human body. Um, I read a report one time and they talked about we lose 1% of our body weight in eight hours of sleep through simple respiration. So when people say, well, how much moisture do you think I'm getting in my house? Well, you know, what's the combined weight of your family? Right. Now, so 500 pounds is not hard to get. So let's say 1% of 500 pounds is five pounds of water. That's three quarters of a gallon of water that you're spraying into your room. From your all, breath. From your breath all night long. And what else do we do at night? We set back our temperatures, right? So now our surfaces get colder, a little colder than everything else. So literally that water vapor is expanding and it's going from high pressure to low. It's looking for that cold surface to phase change to liquid water. So it's a natural process. Um, that's why ventilation is critical. Ventilation at night is critical because we need fresh air. We need fresh air to sleep. I've had so many people say to me, Mike, you know, every time I'm in my house, I feel like I have a cold. I feel like I have a cold. It's the indoor air quality. Over 80% of all houses in the United States and Canada have poor indoor air quality. I didn't come up with these numbers. These are stats that are out there. Over 80%. Why are we, why are we not making sure that this is code? I know in some areas it is code, but it should be code everywhere because it's, it's about our health. Certainly, and, and there's a social aspect to this, right? So what does it cost to go to the hospital? And I haven't, I haven't done that for, to the emergency to get a nebulizer or a, a, a spray for asthma attack. I mean, that's obscene. And, and if you're a low income or something like that and you don't have health insurance, you're still going to the emergency because here's the thing, they will not turn you down. So we run into this from a social standpoint um, with our low income owners or occupants, if you will. And it's, it's, it's almost criminal when I see multifamily structures where they have zero, zero air, air quality management at all. I mean, it's painful to look at. I've told everyone at least have an air cleaner. But when you have this guy, 
that comes with a, a, a filter on its own. That comes with a supply air filter and a return air filter. The supply air filter will help mitigate all of the pollen that's coming from outside in, right? Oftentimes, you know, we, we talk about, first of all, the indoor air is predictably bad. The outdoor air we perceive as being the best air. However, I'm in the Northwest. I have Douglas firs. There's two weeks a year when I have yellow cake powder on everything. How about Atlanta? Have you ever been into Atlanta and watched the green on the vehicles? I'm like, I, oh my yeah. God. Right, right, all of that. So we want to, we have to filter supply air before it comes into the house. And we want to have a way to manage those filters. All of these ERVs are going to have supply filters because it's critical that we manage the outbound air before it comes in. Did you know about that? You didn't tell me? It just came out. Yes, it did. So when did you find out about it? Uh, well, we actually just got it in-house in Canada probably about three weeks ago. Damn. Yeah. Okay. I love that. So and I, to that point, too, I think we can talk about mechanical ventilation. We can talk about code and indoor air quality. But the key is educating consumers, home builders, contractors on the importance of this type of equipment, whether it's ERVs, whether it's an air purification technology, and really pairing all those together to make sure that the best possible solution is given to the homeowner, right? We talk about code. Is indoor air quality ever going to be code? Yes, you can pick certain things, but if we're looking at the way the best to build the house the best around indoor air quality, we have to look at all these things and let them know why this is good for their home because there, there could be a, a, an upcharge to it, but you know what? I think people are willing to pay that upcharge for the sake of their health, and I think that's a message that we need to get across to every home builder, to every contractor, and really to every homeowner out there. For years, people have said to me, Mike, you got to help change code. And you know what? The true answer is it's not about changing code. It's about building smarter. It's about building better. And it's about the homeowners out there saying to the builders, do I have nice fresh air cleaner in that home? Should I buy your house? Can you, can you explain to me if it's good if I have asthma or I have allergies? Can you explain it? Most of the time, the builders don't want to explain it to you. It's things that we need to know. I'll say it really simple. Your lungs are not filtered. You don't want to clean the air with your lungs. You want to make sure you have the right equipment in your home so you're breathing healthy, fresh air. Simple. Seemingly, seemingly it's a simple. We talk about a price cost value aspect, right? When you build a house, if I come to you and I just raise your price and I don't bring any value, I, I have no, you're, you're running me off your job site. But if I can come to you and say, listen, I've got a $1,000 product that will give you a $10,000 advantage over your competitor, you know what? We're, we're talking business now. That's, this is what you need to be able to help sell your houses, and especially in the market that we have today. As a builder today, you're looking at interest rates going up. People are being far more selective about what they're buying. So you need to, to report to that, uh, that buyer every value added product in your house not just the shiny sparkling things but the value added and as a as a homeowner if you have children or aged parents or whatever everybody has the potential to be compromised in, in, with bad air i mean I, that's the one thing about all humans i, I want to add one thing i think on the whole education side of things we we surveyed and this survey is available to anybody just ask we surveyed uh, 650 home building professionals builders homeowners, potential homeowners, contractors, and, and asked them about indoor air quality. And really, they didn't really know what indoor air quality was. When we educated them and told them what the adverse health effects on bad indoor air quality was, and then told them, here's some of the solutions that will fix that, their purchase intent went up by 69%. So it, it's really that education side of it. How do we tell people what they need so that they can tell their custom home builder, for example, or even home builders that are not building to that level around indoor air quality. How do we get them building, what you said, smart, intelligently? It doesn't code. We're never going to change code, Mike. I mean, we change code, and that's a whole process, and it's a whole political process behind the scenes. But we can change the way people build, and I think that's what we have to do as a manufacturer and as people that are interested in it in indoor air quality is educate everybody out there on why you need good indoor air quality. Mike, I, I want to jump in on that real quick because one of the things we talked about last night was a, a program that the Homes Group is doing for educating uh, young people going into this industry. Can you share a little bit about what you're doing there? With the Homes Foundation? Um, I started the Homes Foundation probably 16 years ago. I put my own money in. 
I, I, I saw it important. I mean, I'm the ambassador to world skills and I am for a reason. My daughter, she's the ambassador for women in skilled trades. I, I, I love that, love you, Cher. To me, this is really important. I work with the governments in trying to make it easier for the young to get in the trades. Example, in Nova Scotia, there was too many kids dropping out of school. So they, they created a new program called Options and Opportunities. So if they dropped out of school, they had a chance to go into a woodworking, sheet metal, uh, electrical plumbing. The trades. The trades. And it was just temptation to get them into it. This was a huge success there, and I'd like to see it everywhere. So the Holmes Foundation, what we do is we give away 15 to 20 uh, scholarships and bursaries per year. I'd love to give away 2,000, but I don't, you know, that's an awful lot of money. The idea... And what I love about this is that all of the scholarships and bursaries we've given away, they continuously write us and tell us, thank you so much. I'm now a licensed electrician. I'm now a licensed plumber. I love this. It's a career job with a career wage where you can raise a family and at some point in your world, you will have the resources to maybe to retire without working until you can. Well, the trades, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's a great job that if you work hard, you're honest, you'll be paid well. That's beautiful. And we challenge, I would challenge all of our builder groups if you have the resources. And if you don't, you can maybe reach out to Mike's team and talk about what they've done in the past. Labor in the trades is a problem right now. We need more labor in the trades, more educated labor in the trades. So whatever we can do as a group, whether it's adding adding women in our industry, adding uh, immigration into our industry, figure out how to get more skilled labor because we can always find unskilled labor. That was me when I was in my 20s, by the way, um, to do that work. But we need skilled labor in our industry. Um, and that's what really will grow all of our, our 60 position. 60 percent of all people in the trades are about to retire right now. And it's our age. We're about to retire. Yeah. So if we don't replace these tradespeople, we're going to have a very big problem. Well, I appreciate I you what meant, you're doing I think with you that. Meant your age. Oh your two, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I'll add on to that because I think we do have a crisis. Absolutely. I mean, we could talk about it uh, in Canada. We could talk about it in the U.S. and North America. Uh, but what I would say too is, I have a daughter also, and the other day she's picking her courses for grade 11. And she's like looking for an elective. She goes, introduction to construction. I'm like, do it. She's like, why? And I go, I'll tell you why. She goes, no, dad, you don't have to tell me why because I hear you talking about it all the time on the phone when you're working from home. But again, it's a, it doesn't necessarily need to be in the tools. I think we need some key people, you know, whether it's working for builders, working for contractors that are not always on the tools, but they're actually contributing to the whole, you know, to that whole business and how we can make it right and build it right, right? Mike, I want to I want to jump back to product just for a few minutes here. Um, one of the things that I was just kind of showing you the ability to communicate between a room and a fan. So, uh, tell tell us. So, at Panasonic, we're launching a module that will go right into our Whisper Green Select fan that will allow a wall receptacle in the kitchen with an IEQ module to communicate directly with the fan. So, literally, if you even burn toast in the kitchen, it's going to activate the fan. How does that have value for you as a builder? Let me explain it to everyone out there. In, when we are building your home, if you notice, we will cut one inch off the bottom of every door in the house. The air return and the forced air is supposed to be balanced 100%. Now, what happens is, minimum code again, there'll be a switch that's by your thermostat that turns on the fan upstairs. That's what it's for. I'm making airtight homes that the air barely moves. So with this, and it's a whisper every... Not, no, we're talking about the whisper, whisper green select fan. Right, with a swidget module. Right. So the fan is in the bathroom. What I love about this, and if you don't understand swidget, it's an electrically smart or intelligent circuitry. In every single switch, every single receptacle, it's a plug and play. You can put a light in, you can put a camera in, you can put a sensor in, which I love. Now that sensor he's talking about is coordinating with the fan in the bathroom. Like you said, you burnt the toast, 
it will automatically sense the air is poor air quality all of a sudden, switches on the fan and allows that air movement. And that's just the bathroom fan upstairs. It's just, that's just a bathroom fan, but you could tie that to the ERV. Right. You could tie all sorts of things in there to get a solution for that quickly so that you don't have that, that long-term smell. And it doesn't have to be burnt toast. I say burnt toast because it's a great example, but whatever you're cooking, right? We talk about all sorts of things that are, are coming off that phase change where I'm baking a cake is a, I come back to phase change. Baking a cake takes a liquid, turns it into a solid. I add moisture into the space, right? Now that sensor will pick up that moisture and automatically turn on that exhaust fan. So the moisture doesn't get a chance to phase change back on a cold surface into liquid water. Did you know that our bodies in every single household will emit flakes, dander, whatever you want to call it, off your body, 40 pounds in your ductwork each year? Did you know that? So your skin, 40 pounds inside your ductwork. How many people clean their ductwork once a year? You put up your hand? Most people don't. But if we filter it, the furnace is always going to be clean. The air is going to be clean. This is what we need to learn. These are things that are so important. Again, out of sight, out of mind. We can't see what's in the air. And we exhaust that directly to the outside. Yes. I don't have to recirculate that back to my house, right? right? I can exhaust it directly outside. And you talk about your 40 pounds of human. There's also our big dog. Our big dog makes us all look like pipers when it comes to outgassing and shedding and whatnot. I mean... We love our dog. I'm not going to get rid of our dog, but I'm going to manage that air quality based on what I see as a problem. And that the dog is part of it. What I see is what Panasonic has put together is a complete, simple package of indoor air quality for every single home out there. A Whisper Air Repair. What's the name of this guy again? The, Whis the Whisper Comfort 60. Whisper Comfort 60. I will remember that one. It's all right. And a Whisper uh, uh, Whisper Green fan. Select, right? Yes. The Whisper Green Select. And you're adding Just LED lights to it. I really like that. that. Chipset LED lights, which is a, a more efficient and, and more output. It's light. bright. And it's controllable, right? I can control that value of, of how, much, how many lumens it's going to output. So, and then we also have added more options as far as the integration of controls into that fan, where I have both a motion sensor, I have a condensation, I have a motion and a condensation. I have the motion that'll turn on the, the fan and the light, and I have a motion that will turn on simply the night light. So if you have your other controls managing all everything else, I can still turn on that night light in the middle of the night when, well, I can't speak for you, but when I'm out roaming around looking for a place, you know, to, <laughs> <laughs> when you wake up in the middle of the night? I wake up in the middle of the night. Yeah, let's just, Every let's night. just leave it at that. Right, yes. right. So I'm going to add a shameless plug for our, our heat pump equipment. That really completes the solution when we talk about heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. And we call it Breathe Well, the only complete air quality solution. So we tie all those pieces of mechanical equipment together really to optimize comfort and optimize indoor air quality. And I think we're the only manufacturer that can actually do that uh, in the industry. That is amazing. Heat pumps are coming, uh, they're coming a long way right now. Everyone, it's the most efficient heating system that, it, that is out there. We didn't use them often enough. They were used in places that were, I don't know, maybe just the science behind their building. They, they just didn't have duct work, so they put in a heat pump system. I love it, but again, you guys are putting in one that cleans the air. We, yeah, That's called the Climate Pure XE. So it's the only ductless mini split on the unit that will heat, cool, and purify your room and it uses the same nano ex technology that the whisper air repair has in it except that it's in the wall mount uh, those little white things you see on the wall that gives you that heating and cooling so really what you got is you got a bigger glorified uh, air purifier that's on 24 7 but also can heat and cool your home that is amazing more efficient distribution because that fan will move will move those uh, hydroxylized radicals farther across the room it'll it's a far better application. Do you think it's, it's because a lot of people out there don't want to spend? They, 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 they say, okay, simple. This unit costs you 500 bucks, and the Panasonic unit is 600 bucks. Just as an example, I'm just giving numbers. doesn't mean that's an exact number. And most people are going to go, ah, I can save 100 bucks and buy the one piece. But you can't do that because you can't. You need to spend your money properly when it comes to your home and your health. You spend the extra dollars, and you never have a problem in the future, physically. So that centers around, and I, I'm going to throw this back to your team, right? It, not just your team, but your team figuratively in the sense that it's about how you sell that product. 
if you can't bring value to the product, you're not going to get that extra hundred dollars. Agreed. But so we have to help you understand what the value is and, and how that, in, and I mean, and I say you in this respect, uh, you have it down. But a lot of builders don't understand what brings value, you know, or realtors, right? When was the last time you walked with a realtor through a house and they pointed up and say, oh, by the way, we use Panasonic continuous run fans because that's our air quality process, or we use an ERV because that's our air quality. Honestly, half the time they won't even be, talk about it because A, they don't even know what ERV means, energy recovery ventilator, by the way, um, or whatever. And they won't talk about the things they don't understand. What they talk about is, this has hardwood floors. Okay, that's great. This has, you know, whatever, you know, double pane windows or triple pane windows. And they, these are very visual things that they can relate to. But air quality is invisible, right? And it takes an imagination and it takes an explanation to bring value to what we're doing. Yesterday, we had the, what we call the Home Summit. And that's all Homes Approved Partners. And this isn't about money. Everyone thinks it's about money. It's not. It's about relationships. It's about the synergy. In our big meeting yesterday, we discussed, do you understand radon? What is radon? Put up your hand if you know what radon is. Okay. Number one leading cause of lung cancer besides smoking cigarettes is radon gases. How many people have checked their house for radon? You have. You have? See, this is, this, I like this. Anyone else? Okay. Radon is really bad. It comes from decayed stone in the ground. I believe it's uranium. It's radioactive, correct. Yeah. Yes. And it's, again, stock effect. You heard me say this earlier because that's what happens in your home. It, it wants to pull the air from the ground, from the basement and or crawl space into your air. So I said, if we're going to be building homes, we should be putting in an interior weeper with the exhaust that pulls out the radon. Now you benefit. You've got an interior weeping system in case it floods. And two, it's constantly 24 hours a day pulling out the radon. I'm telling the builders to do it and brag about it. Put in the ERV, the Panasonic ERV. Put in the Whisper Air Repair, Air Repair and brag about it people will, will buy the home. If you educate people on that, they'll buy the home. But when you go to buy a new house, what do you see? Uh, you want to choose your cabinets, door styles, uh, what kind of tiles do you want? Yeah. You really want a free fridge, washer yeah, and dryer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all they actually try and sell you. You know, the funny thing about a lot of the things that we're doing, right? We talk about f physics. I know you guys don't talk about physics, but I talk about physics he all does. the time. Ken, we got yeah. one minute. If you're talking about physics, the, the, you got to uh, be short. One minute, uh, perfect. I don't know if you can talk uh, about it short. Two minutes. Physics. I got right, two well, minutes. Well, let's get, let's I, go I, deep. I got two. The beauty of what we do with, with ERVs and with exhaust fans is we allow physics to work for us. If you feel if, like, for example, changing the temperature of the air requires heating and all this stuff, but the reality is I can do that really simply through physics where the air passes by one another but never touches, and now I'm going to take the exhaust air that has heat and I'm going to add that heat to the incoming air, I don't have to reheat that. I don't have to, it, it, it moves moisture across that, that ERV as well. I don't have to go out and dehumidify or humidify. I don't have to add those expenses into anything. We let the physics do its work, and it's the least expensive process we can ever do. You know, what house do you want? Do you want the simple build house, or do you want a house that actually is good for you for the rest of your life? They cost the same. Which one do you want to pick? It's up to you. Hey, you know what? Even if the smart, healthy house costs a little bit more, is that not what you want for your family members right. and all the people living in your house? That's spending your money, right, the first time. Yeah. Sonny, Mike, thank you very much. Thank I you. really do appreciate your time here today. And uh, I love to have you guys with us when we have these great conversations. Well, thank we you. always talk numbers, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> all right, thank you, everybody, for joining thank us. You. Thank you. And thank you, Mike Holmes.